Hi, Misha here, and this isn't one I plan to do at all anytime soon, but let's talk about the Dark Trooper, most recently from the Mandalorian, but really a modern twist on something we've had in, uh, in the Star Wars universe since 1995, the uh, Dark Forces video game, which was... Uh, Basically, well, it's, it's labeled as a Doom clone, but believe it or not, it wasn't even built on a Doom or modified Doom engine. It actually had its own engine, but I digress. This robot, in some ways, fits with my last video, because last time we looked at the B1 series battle droid, and this is yet another battle droid, although infinitely more advanced. And the reason I'm doing this video now, I was not expecting this black series figure in for a while maybe not until October certainly not at the beginning of September because they just came out and it's considered a deluxe which looking at a few reviewers online they don't like but I disagree I think it's worth that considered a deluxe keep in mind my Star Wars figures in the 1980s you were happy to get one maybe two accessories so the fact that this actually comes with five yeah that's deluxe enough to me plus he's pretty interesting figure so you know me let's talk a little history and uh to help out we've got good old moff gideon hanging out on the spinny thing Wee! it's like a uh, merry-go-round for moffs but he's the one that kind of reintroduced the Dark Trooper into canon back in 1995 and in subsequent legends, I guess we call it now. These were robots. And uh, there was essentially the Phase Zero, which was kind of like the, uh, I don't know what they call it, it was it the T-100, the, the skeleton one from Terminator, just a, you know, a, a, a skeleton with a, a knife and a shield, or a sword and a shield. And back then they were supposedly built from Frick, which was lightsaber resistant. That was phase zero. Phase one was a more advanced droid. And phase two was a fully tanked out droid or even exoskeleton because we see at the end of Dark Forces the uh, main antagonist wearing one of the suits. And then as time went on 21st century and the Clone Wars were a thing the Dark Trooper took on a very dark sinister undertone where it was said that these were actually old clones that had their uh, consciousness some other organic material put into a droid body a la General Grievous or Darth Vader only even less so keep in mind that yeah by this point the clones were accelerating in their aging and becoming useless except their brains were still very functional so they were kind of a uh, cyborgs some sources said they're volunteer other sources said eh, not so much so the dark troopers got very dark for a while and then after Disney purchased the whole thing, it was kind of quiet until they appeared in season two of The Mandalorian about halfway through the season and, of course, running through about what, four or five episodes total. And now they're kind of back to being full robots. In current canon, people like Moff Gideon over here, hello, kind of resurrected the program that was started back in the Imperial days but shelved for various reasons until after the destruction of the second Death Star at which time it seems to have been revived and used by Imperial forces. In the beginning with Canon this was started off to be uh, an exoskeleton basically a mech, a small mech to have a more advanced, enhanced Stormtrooper. And in the new canon, this is considered Generation 3, or Phase 3, Dark Trooper, 
And as Gideon says, basically the skeleton was ready, the outer was ready, but the human inside was kind of the weakest point. So now we've introduced a droid brain, neurology, what have you. Much like the B1, this is considered a class 4 droid or battle droid. But unlike the B, the B1, it was not designed for mass production and to be cannon fodder. While these could be produced in large numbers, they were designed to be elite soldiers. And yeah, here we have it. He is uh, reasonably tall, about 1.9 meters, so about 6'3". And he weighs about 250, maybe 300 pounds. He's somewhat skeletal, but he's pretty well armored. Although, as the last episode in Season 2 of Mandalorian showed us, certainly not built for many lightsaber-resistant material. And it doesn't seem like Gideon has this many. Um, maybe a platoon. So, maybe a, a 12 or 24. But, unlike a lot of droids or stormtroopers, these things, uh, they did well in combat. One of them was a challenge for... Din Djarin. and uh, yeah, they're built in with quite a few features. The armor is predominantly uh, black and silver. They've got red little eyes, very inspired by like A New Hope, Darth Vader, including the helmet. Although you could say it's kind of more stormtroopery or death troopery. Got kind of shoulder. Interestingly, this figure, this kind of chest piece, is. A separate piece kind of moves around, it won't fall off, it's, it's on there, but that means later they could actually make it kind of modular and put different pieces on. In the back, above the robot butt, there's a cylinder that could be a thermal detonator. There's some pouches on the side, and pretty well normal. And we have a unique gun. Now I tried to look up and see if this gun had a name, but I think it's new enough to canon. It's just called the the Dark Trooper gun. And it's a pretty large, it's considered a blaster rifle. There's no stock because the robot really doesn't need that. And much like in the original 95 video game, it seems to have two firing modes. An upper barrel for blasters, and then a lower barrel for projectiles, grenades or missiles. Looks a little different from what it did in the video game, but um, same basic concept. So that's pretty cool. And I'm happy he came with a unique gun instead of just, you know, E11 or, good God, another uh, uh, DLT-19. And it's very much considered his, his gun. It's considered a little heavy for most organics to operate. And unlike a normal Stormtrooper, he's actually accurate with it. He's also well trained in hand-to-hand -hand combat it's for a robot, which actually gets to some of his uh, extra accessories. Now, on this arm, I'm going to set you down for a second. On this arm, I put in his second hand. His, sorry, almost knocked you over. Did I mention it's really late at night when I'm doing this? His little fist hand. And for anyone who's seen Mandalorian, you know my the fist hand is uh, kind of important. He can actually punch through a bulkhead door with this thing. So the first two added accessories you get are a second pair of hands. Basically, you get two fist hands, one of which I installed, one I didn't, and you get another clamp hand, uh, you know, grip hand. So two grip hands, two punching hands. Which is cool because it was actually in the show. And it still rotates and they actually fit very tight. I'm always reluctant about interchangeable hands or heads because sometimes they fit really loose. Other times, what if you break the peg? Because I have bad luck about that stuff. Of course, it has pretty standard articulation. Unfortunately, he can't Superman fly because the shoulder... Although, you know, if you remove this piece, he probably could. Eh, he can do like this. That's close enough, right? The head doesn't do a lot of moving. Just kind of up and down. 
burp, burp. He's a robot. He does robot things. And it rotates. And uh, I don't know if it's all of them, but on mine, the uh, feet joints are not loose. They don't flop around. But if you try to stand him on them, he does want to kind of rock forward. But there's a decent reason for that, because his other added extras are these little uh, flame effects. Now, if there was a hole in the butt, you could say that that uh, just tells you that he ate Mexican the night before. But since there's not, these actually go in his little feet. And it's a good compromise. They plug in tight enough they're not going to fall off, but loose enough that if it falls on them, they're going to just fall out instead of snap off. And that's, of course, because uh, they have short-range jet thrusters in their feet to take off from the surface and go back to a ship. These actually can drop out of a ship and return to it in the show. Even in Dark Forces, they had a jet pack, a la Boba Fett, but now they're built into the feet, which actually makes sense for a robot. And they're actually very big pegs. that you can kind of angle a bit. But again, if it were to fall, they'll just pop out versus snapping off. And it, one thing I almost did, here's my fist. Since there's a little hole in the uh, fist, I wanted to make a joke. Where am I at? There we are. About plugging the flame into the fist. And uh, oh, oh, so many jokes can be made there. The flying fist, the flaming fist, getting fisted on fire. Even though the the male and female pegs are the same and they line up, it, this is a little bit bigger. So unfortunately it won't go in. But that was my little joke. So in total, counting the gun in both sets of hands, we have seven detachable parts Although, two will always be on your gun, unless you want to pull a Vader and say you had a hand chopped off. You could do that. And he's the regular 6-inch size, maybe just a hair taller. And the Empire did use droids, as an example. Here is uh, K2SO, also known as the best part of Rogue One. He was a KX Imperial security droid. He's uh, quite a bit taller than about anything, but also a lot of his height are his very skeletal legs. But then you can have a regular character like Gideon here, who's uh, I think around 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, And uh, laying on top is, oh no, uh, Gideon's butt's on a flame. You know, scaling wise, it's fine. Of course, these are all plastic, PVC, polymer, not metal. It'd be kind of neat to have a metal one of these actually, but then again, it probably wouldn't be, what, uh, 35 bucks? I think the deluxe ones are now. But it was something interesting and something that kind of goes back to the 90s. And it's, Mandalorian was good about bringing stuff like that in in a natural way, not forgetting about it. Of course, the design's not exactly the same. But, um, yeah, this guy doesn't want to stand at all, probably. I don't ever try to display these. They sit in boxes. I mostly just have them because I was really curious as always, what he really looked like. And uh, he doesn't disappoint. To me, anyway. This just this guy just feels like a dude. But I have a pistol, though. He needs a hat. Everyone needs a hat. <laughs> mm. 
But, uh, yeah, the Dark Trooper. He uh, is certainly one that I'm pretty sure everyone was wanting in the series, and here he is. And I, I think he, considering all the little bits and pieces he comes with, is, uh, is neat. And, man, eh, you don't have to buy him. It's not like a subscription thing. This is kind of what I'm doing now that I don't have any new Eagle Moss to talk about, really. Although I do have a new um, Hobby Master I'll show you sometime soon. Actually, two new Hobby Masters, although one's not quite in the mail yet. But good grief, those things are over 100 bucks now, so... Yeah, these seem a little easier to do. But um, let me know what you think. Also, feel free to talk about The Mandalorian, because um, I honestly found it quite entertaining. But, you know, I'm sure some will say I'm wrong, but eh, why not? Escapism is good. As always, if you could, please do like, share, and subscribe. Also remember, I am blind, so yeah, I do the best I can. But with that, this is Misha. Catch you very soon next time.